Hi, this is Umberto from NerdKits. Recently, one of our customers in Texas emailed us about an interesting project he was doing. He owns a bar. He had already written his own point of sale system that he was using to run the registers at his place, and he wanted to use his NerdKit to easily update his inventory when a new delivery came in. Basically, he wanted to weigh a new shipment and, based on the weight, determine how many bottles there were, and then have the NerdKit automatically update that inventory on his computer. We thought having a scale hooked up to a computer was a really cool idea, so we decided to try it ourselves. We went to Target and bought a $20 digital scale. The model we bought was a Taylor Electronic Scale. Now Mike is going to explain how these digital scales work. We need to figure out how to measure force electronically. First, we have to realize that whenever you push or pull on a material, it stretches or gets compressed. Mechanical engineers call this stress and strain. So, imagine a diving board. If we put a weight at the end, the tip moves, the top surface gets stretched, and the bottom surface gets compressed. Now imagine a resistor. Like we talked about in the NerdKit's guide, resistors are a common circuit element, and even a wire is a resistor. So, just like a pump has to work harder to push water through a longer and narrower pipe, if we stretch that piece of wire and make it longer and narrower, its resistance will go up. If that wire is sitting on top of the diving board, also known as a cantilever, then by measuring its resistance, we can figure out how much force is being applied at the tip. That's the basic idea behind a strain gauge. So let's take a look inside the scale. Here's what the packaging originally looked like. Here it is from the top. And from the bottom. On one of the feet on the back, there's a little push button, which is normally used to turn the scale on. To take it apart, we first had to use a small screwdriver to pop off four springs on the back. Then, we had to put two holes in the sticker and take out screws underneath. So once you get it apart, on the top side you'll see a mechanical linkage that spreads the force from the top surface onto the V-shaped part in the center. On the bottom part, you'll see all the electronics. The sensor itself has the four wires coming off the bar in the middle of this picture. The V-shaped part from the top pushes on the end of this beam, which is just like the diving board we were talking about earlier. The sensor wires go into the circuit board, and they're labeled S+, E+, S-, and E-. It's a pretty good guess that S and E mean sense and excite. So if it's just a resistor changing as it's being stretched, why are there four wires? This is actually a setup with four resistors, called a Wheatstone bridge. It's used because it makes it possible to measure very small changes in one of the resistances, like we have in a strain gauge. So by having these two wires drive an excitation voltage, and just measuring the voltage difference on these two sense wires, we can turn a tiny change in resistance into a voltage difference. In fact, for the scale, the total voltage difference is just a few millivolts when a person's full weight is applied. Since the analog to digital converter on the chip can only read 1024 divisions in 5 volts, or about 5 millivolts per step, this signal is way too small, so we need to amplify it. We decided to use a chip from analog devices called the AD620. This can amplify a very small differential voltage, and we set it up to amplify by 150. We got this part when analog devices was giving free samples to engineers and hobbyists, but at this point you can find them from normal electronic suppliers online. The AD620 is very easy to use and can plug right into the breadboard along with the normal NerdKit's parts. So we can hook up the amplifier like this to amplify the signal before it goes into the microcontroller. This part uses two resistors to create a voltage reference at 2.5 volts for the amplifier. This other resistor sets the gain of the amplifier. The output goes right into the microcontroller. Here's how everything's laid out on the NerdKit's breadboard. We basically built the normal NerdKit, but without the LCD, and then just added the amplifier. 
There are four wires heading off the bottom of this picture, which go right to the sensor. The white and blue wires are the sense wires. The black and red are the excitation voltage. Before the signal goes into the microcontroller, there's one more trick we use to help get more resolution and help get rid of some of the noise. Instead of always driving the Wheatstone bridge one way, we actually continuously switch the polarity of the driving signal. If we pretend there's an extra noise voltage added on, you can see that subtracting these two measurements has the effect of canceling out the noise signal and doubling our actual signal. This isn't perfect in practice because this noise signal might change between measurements, but it can help a lot. If you've already completed the NerdKit's guide, the microcontroller code for this is a simple extension of the temperature sensor project, basically just adding the switching of the excitation voltage. So instead of covering the code in the video, you can just see it on our website. Humberto is now going to cover the PC software side of things. The code on the microcontroller is very simple. It just reads the two samples from the analog to digital converter and writes them through to the serial cable. Instructions for how to talk to those parts of the chip are explained in the NerdKit's guide. And the specific code for this project is on our website. Now, on the computer side, we need to write a simple script to read from the serial port. We chose to do this in Python, which is a free programming language you can download. The chip is sending raw values of the voltage it is reading. We need to do a little bit of math to convert that to pounds. First, we need to zero the scale when it gets turned on, so when the program starts, we take a bunch of samples with nothing on the scale and call that value the zero value. We also have to define a slope, so we can know how much the reading goes up per pound that we put on the scale. To get this slope, we put a known object on the scale, measure the reading, and divide those two to get the measured output per pound. Every time we take a reading, we take the measured value, subtract the zero value, and divide by the slope to convert to pounds. The code we wrote takes a stream of values and builds a graph of the weight on the scale over time. We also created a different app that just divides the value in pounds by the weight of one can, so we can see how many cans are on the scale. Hopefully, you learned something about how strain gauges and electronic scales work, and how to hook up sensors to your NerdKit, and from there to your PC. For the source code or more videos like this one, check out our website at www.nerdkits.com.